So let's go back to R and look at this data again. I'll share what is needed here with you uh, later on, but let's just go through to find the dates. So now we have s the temperatures and the heat consumption, the Julian date, and what is the actual date. To just take the uh, day by day by aggregating things on the same date, plotting the temperature, plotting the heat consumption. If we make a linear model here, and then we add a line on top of this, that is the temperature, how it scales to it, you can easily see that it actually fits quite well in here. It's not a nice plot, but just to reproduce what was there before. And I have just added a second axis over here to represent the temperature, but what we care about is the recursive least squares. So let's just look at what it does. Basically, I have a function here. My recursive least squares function implemented straightforward, um, not doing things too complicated, um, not too simple, and just storing some information when it comes out. So let's just run this function and let's try to run a model and see what comes out. So we get what are the x's that are actually used at this point in time, what are the residual uh, uh, prediction errors, what are the estimated parameters, and what was the lambda used. So this is a structure used both for variable and fixed lambdas just to have the opportunity to plot the same things. So let us do some plotting. Let's make these plot a little bit large. Uh, actually, let's just zoom into them like this. So at the top here, we have the one-step prediction errors. Down here, we have the estimate of the intercept. And then we have the intercept of estimate of the slope. So here, everything is more smooth than what I showed in the slide before, because it did here it did it on the daily data. We still see here in the middle some odd things is happening. We also see it down here in the slope estimate is something is happening, but we'll get back to that. Now, let's first find an optimal lambda. Let's ignore the first 50 uh, estimates. So we'll just run the recursive least squares and make a sum of all the prediction errors, excluding the first 50, and see how that runs. So first, let's just pick some lambdas and then calculate the objective function for our sequence of lambdas and plot that. So what do we see? We see that around 0 0.8, that's the, mac that's the optimal value. 2 million is the value of the, of the objective function that we aim at here. So let's try to run it and find the exact minimum. It's actually very, very close to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 7966. Let's run the recursive filter with the optimal values, see what comes out. It basically looks like before. Let's do the same plots as before and look at it. So what happens now is that the dip that we had here in the middle has become much more uh, visible now that we lowered lambda to 0.8 rather than 0.99 or whatever it was before. So we see that something odd is happening here in the middle. It's just, what is the number here? It's minus 100 for the slope. What are the errors up here? It's minus 600. That's the maximum error here. So let's just look at, if we get back to the objective up here, the objective value is 1.9 million. Now we have one observation out of the year with 400 observations. You have one observation that is minus 600. When you square that, you get 360,000. So what happens here? Basically, one-sixth of the objective function comes from one single observation, or one single error here. So all the rest here is contributing five six, but this is this one is one six of the objective. So when you're finding the optimal value, you're focusing on this particular day. 
Maybe that's not optimal, but that's when everything is having the same weight. So that was the plot. Let's just look at what happened in the neighborhood of this period. So it was here that we got a different estimator. So when we look at around 210 here, that's where things are very low. Then we see that the heat consumption is much greater than the previous day. We actually have an increase in heat consumption from around 1600 and becomes 1800, rounds up to 2200 and back to 1600, whereas the temperature over here, well, there's a very cold day and a, and a warm day, but so the cold day here should be physically larger, but up here we have minus 3.5 and 3 point some degrees. It's almost the same temperature, but the heat consumption increases. So something different is happening there. I don't know what it is, but it's just something when you have real data, you have real problems. And you may consider if you should do something about those particular observations, or you should just let go with that. We can do the same thing on an hourly basis. Basically, same objective function, it's just different numbers. This time, I will run again. Take a little bit longer to calculate because now there are 24 times more observations. So that's also the scale of the calculation time. Now the lambda value, the optimal lambda, is much smaller. It's around 0.5, but again, as before, let's find the optimal value. It takes a short while, and the optimal is actually very close to 0.5. Again, it's very small for fitting a linear regression model, which is basically what we're doing. Effective memory of this is 1 over 1 minus lambda, so it's effectively only keeping two observations in here. So let's run the field again with those values and do the plots as before. Now it's just the hourly plots. It takes a second, and it's here. Everything looks a little bit more noisy because we have so many more observations. So the errors up here, and we see that the intercept has a lot of departures here. So with this small memory, it's not actually quite robust. We do see some of these large dips. Again, we have some errors here, but this is actually not that useful. So basically, it was some of these extreme observations that changed our estimate from being a good estimator to be not that useful. So. What should we do about it? We should, one way to, to do things would be to have variable forgetting. So I will implement the same as model as before, just with the forgetting factor as I include it. See where it is. We have the lambda down here. There's a minimum lambda, and then it's the equation from the slide, the simple uh, solution to that. Now, if we run with 2 times 10 to the 5th as our S0. Let's see what happens. Now we take the data and let's do the plot as before. So what we see here is it looks pretty much like what it was before. The dip here is not so great. And we the prediction errors up here are you don't have this minus 600 anymore. You ha have a minus 300 and a plus 400, but it's not as bad as it was. Let's look at how lambda evolved over time. So when we look at it here, we see it, it's staying up close to one, and then it makes some dips. In particular, it makes a huge dip down to the minimum, or very, very close to the minimum value, just about the time when we had this thing. So when it gets to that particular period where things are bad, it just forgets everything, and then it starts learning again. But if you look at the mean value of the lambdas, then we are up at 0.95, which is quite different from the 0.8. So this is an effective average memory of 20, where the other one was using 5 for the hourly data, uh, for the daily data. And 350 out of the 366 days were above 0.8. So we only had 16 where the lambda was less than the optimal fixed lambda. If we do the same thing on the hourly data, change the objective a little bit, and plot it, then 
you can say the errors up here is again, of course, should be a cloud, and it really is. The intercept here is changing over time. We still have some things here. It's not at all as noisy as it was before. There's much more structure also to the slope, but we do see, again, a period here where some odd things are happening, but we get over it. As before, let's look at what the lambda is doing. And when we look at this, it's very difficult to see. We are staying up close to one and then make a lot of dips. So every so often we forget a lot, but we're nowhere near the 0 0.5, which was the optimal fixed forgetting factor for this data set. So we're always remembering more than we did before, but very often we kind of clear a large part of our memory. So maybe we should do something different that doesn't isn't as drastic, but then you need to use another model for optimizing, uh, selecting the lambda, um, which we won't do now. The mean value here is 0 0.98, so it's very, very close to 1 in mean, and it's just to zoom in to a small period of time to show what is actually happening. So we see some dips, and then it recovers, dips, recover, maybe actually to make it more clear. I should add that the line type here should be an overlay, so then we can see all where all the points are. So it drops down and then it grows up again, drops, but very often it just moves around up here very close to one. So that's how we like things to do, um, so that we have a lot of memory when we ha I know our model is good. And then we can forget a little bit more when a model is not so good anymore. That's the idea about adaptive forgetting. So that was a little bit more detail on what was going on here.